um hello i'm uh, tom parry from uh, no direction home um uh, a group that is uh working with comedians starting out at the start of their career we put on gigs up and down the country or online at the moment and we have professional headliners to headline our gigs and give advice to all our participants and our latest headliner uh, who i'm talking to is the brilliant fataha al Ghori. hello fataha Hello, and thank you for calling me a professional. Oh, That's wow. one of the nicest things I've ever been called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although, I mean, we were discussing earlier, it does come with a slightly weird pressure. Like, I've started mm. referring to myself, when people ask what my job is, I always say writer, which is a slightly, mm. I feel like it's a bit of a cop-out, but it, it feels safe, for, especially with taxi drivers and hairdressers. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because when you say to them, I'm a comedian, they're like, oh, tell me a joke. Oh, no. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so yeah and then yeah it just doesn't work and then sometimes I do silly things like knock knock they're like oh come on yeah. <laughs> you know and stuff like that so I just wind them up um, yeah. yeah I think that is, that is that is actually a good bit of advice that I've never given uh the no direction home guys is have have a you should have a joke that you always use for any situation where someone says go on then give us a joke because it's the worst it is the worst thing in the world when people do that <laughs> <laughs> um, you should do your worst joke and then they don't laugh and then they yeah. feel really embarrassed and yeah. then you laugh do you know what i mean i'm like I'm, sometimes i do jokes on stage that don't get laugh i'm like i don't care that's my favorite joke yeah and if you lot don't laugh you're gonna get a smack like you know so i just <laughs> if it's my favorite joke i'm keeping it <laughs> so, yeah i do love how um confrontational you are with your audience but in a really lovely funny way um, have you always had that kind of energy when you go on stage right from the get go? Yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like when, I, when I'm doing my comedy, I like it to be inclusive. So I don't want the audience to just be laughing. I want us to all, I don't know, I want it to be like all of us laughing together and joking. You know what I mean? I just, and involving them in it and stuff like that. But that's what I like. That's my personal style. And obviously everyone has their own style. So, um, yeah, but that's what I like. I like, but like picking on the audience and, stuff yeah. like that i don't mind the odd heckler either like no you, you strike me as someone who can absolutely handle hecklers <laughs> yeah that's why i like it sometimes i'm like oh i'm not doing 10 minutes comedy i'm doing 10 minutes of destroying this heckler today so, <laughs> so yeah it just depends on yeah on the night and stuff so yeah yeah well i love that i love that confidence that you have i'm quite interested to know I mean, do you, did you always feel that, like, if you take me back to your first few gigs, mm -hmm. like, do you remember your, is your first gig still vivid, like, in your head? Do you remember it? Yes, yes, I do. Um, so the, I did a course, and it was, it was a 12-week course. Right. And then at the end of it, you got to perform in front of an audience. And a lot of, I'd be, like, a lot of the audience were probably other people's friends and stuff, other acts' friends and stuff like that and um yeah I was nervous I had my notes there on a piece of like stuck up somewhere and stuff I was so nervous but when you get <laughs> and then like when you do a joke and it's sorry I keep on getting these notifications I'm sorry like stop no, don't it's be my mum saying where are you I'm like at work <laughs> like, you should have said it's your agent you should oh it's my agent you know, yeah. I'm just getting a lot of oh, it's a busy day for me true actually you're right I should um yeah I should say, sorry, mum, I'm ironing my hijabs. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, I remember, like, doing some jokes and people were laughing and I was like, huh? Like, that kind of thing, you don't expect it. Because I think yeah. when we, um, I think performing, people think it's, I don't know, I think some people have that attitude of you just have, it's like reading off a piece of paper or something. You know, like when you're performing, say, like spoken word stuff, yeah. you're just reading and the people are listening and soaking it in. You don't necessarily need a reaction from them. Whereas with comedy, it's different. You need a reaction from them because there's an energy exchange between you and, and the, the people watching. So, so yeah, when they laugh, I'm like, what, 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 what? Okay, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, um. Yeah, it was, I was so nervous, really nervous. Like, yeah, I so, think so I love that phrase, energy exchange. I think that's exactly yeah. right. Like I always say to the guys, it's kind of, you have to remember it's a conversation. It's obviously, yes. obviously it's a conversation where you're the loudest person in the conversation. <laughs> it's it's yeah. always the, the way you want it to be. But it is yeah. absolutely like you need that response and you need to be live to it. It's no good just right, you know, it's not like theatre. You know, that's what no. makes it so much more exciting. 
yes absolutely absolutely you respond sometimes people will shout stuff out and you respond at the beginning like when you're first starting out it's really difficult because you don't understand you're like why are you not just sitting there and listening because you expect like you said the theater kind of audience but they're not like that they'll shout things out and and you know whatever like I do jokes about how old I am and they're like, shut up, you ain't that old. <laughs> I'm like, you shut up. So, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so sometimes, yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's just great. I love it. I love doing it. And do you, prefer, do you prefer a lively crowd like that? Do you prefer a little bit of them shouting out and things like that? Yeah, I do, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind as long as it's not like nasty, because then I destroy them, like you said. As long, as long as they're not being rude or anything like that. But I do like a bit of, you know, participation and stuff. Like I like that. If you ask them a question, they answer back, and and so. And if they don't, that's okay, because I just tear them up anyway. So <laughs> either way, they don't know. <laughs> you know when they? It's like when you give people sh two straws and you say, if you pick the shortest one, then you're out or whatever. Both them straws are short for me. So <laughs> whether <laughs> whether you're silent or whether you shout out, you're still getting tore up. So <laughs> so um so yeah, I like that. I like that, the participation that's great. stuff. That's great. What was it like for you the first um like that first twelve months from so from your first gig after you finished your course to kind yeah. of going out into the circuit. Were you, are you London, you're London based, aren't you? Yes, yes. So did you, was it a case of, did you do that thing of going to open mic gigs and kind of putting your name down and waiting to get on that kind? Did you go all through that process? I didn't do any like that. I did the ones where you have to apply and then send a video. Right. And then, and then, um, and then they give you a spot if they like the video, but I didn't do any of those just walk in and, Cause I, cause I, cause I build my, not, I have to get myself ready. And if I get myself ready and I go there and they say, you're not, there's no spaces, I'll go mad. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, but what am I going to do with all this energy? <laughs> Stuff like that. I'll just force myself on stage. So like, so, um, so yeah, so I prefer to know cause then I have to get into a certain mindset and prepare yeah. and stuff. But yeah, doing loads of open, open mic spots. And um, yeah, it was different. Sometimes you're the only woman on, I think it's, changed a little bit now but not as much as it needs to but I've been on stage where there's 11 men and me I'm like what is this you know like my mum would yeah. be so proud she'd be like Fetiha, you have a husband now look 11 you know like you can choose one and, and stuff like that so so yeah so I just it's, it was daunting it's really daunting and because you're different as well you're, you know, like a Muslim hijabi woman, they're like, oh, what? And it's in a pub sometimes, or, yeah. and then they're like, oh, what are you doing here? That kind of thing. And yeah, there's a lot of, um, it's really nerve, like really, really nerve wracking. Yeah, sure. I can imagine. And, and also, I mean, like, I bet, I imagine there are times where not only you're the only female on the lineup, you're also the only Muslim on the lineup, or yes. a hijabi Muslim on the lineup. Yes. And, the, you know, the only like ethnic there yeah, absolutely. you know like and stuff so you're like oh god you know and then and you always get these guys coming up going oh i didn't understand that joke i'm like well, piss off if you didn't understand the joke piss off go and buy my soon to come out netflix special all <laughs> right and then and, that, and, I, and i promise you i'll do a little credit in it that explains the joke to you idiot like do you know what i mean i'm like get out of my face honestly so yeah you always get guys that they try to give you like advice or how long you've been going i've been going you know and then, and then you tell them that i've been going 10 years you know what would be really good for you i'm like do you know what would be really good for you to shut your mouth for you swallow them teeth in it like shut up so um so yeah they just wind you up yeah I really like this, uh, like, I think that attitude of, like, not conceding an inch and kind of being on the mm. front foot is so, like, uh, useful for that kind of start, you know, to go out there and it is like you've got to feel like you're attacking the circuit. Yes. Yeah, it does feel like that. It really does. And, um, yeah, you, you, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to be like that. You have to be a bit fierce, I think, because there's, because, I don't know, it, you know, as you know, you know, when you're performing, you want people to like what you're doing because you're proud of it. That's your work. That's your writing. That's your performance. Yeah. That's stuff that you think is funny. That's stuff you've put thought into and hard work into. So when it's not like appreciated, that really like cuts you in half, you know? Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you know, because it's happened to like we, everybody, no matter how good you are, everybody dies on stage and, and stuff. So, um, so yeah. 
And how did know, you find? Did you find the? I found the tough gigs like the most helpful, really, because they're the ones I felt like I really learned from. Like that thing, like the the obviously the good gigs feel good. Yeah. But you kind of you leave going, oh, I think I can do this. Whereas the tough gigs make you go away and think, how can I get better? You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Yes. And if you, I mean, if you're trying new jokes as well and stuff like that, they they can. Um, you come away learning, like you said, maybe a better segue, like uh, maybe changing the wording, maybe it's whatever. Like I agree with you, but it's hard though. It's tough. You do take a knock when yeah. you're dying, on if you die on stage or if you don't have such a good gig, yeah. it's tough. But you're right. I guess that you have to look at it like that. Why didn't it go right? Sometimes it's not you though. Sometimes the audience are just, you know. Yeah, Twats, yeah. innit? Like, they don't mind it. They're not laughing, or they laugh for like three seconds. I'm like, excuse me, and I'll tell them. I'm like, excuse me, that deserved an applause break. You best start clapping. Like, what? <laughs> like, that's my best joke. So, yeah, but that's the way I interact with them anyway. And that's a good way of getting out of dying as well. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Just bully them. Um, I've got, I've got, well, that's, yeah. So, I mean, like, I, I'm just kind of making notes in terms of the tips that you're giving. And so far, I think, but like, you like not conceding an inch and like bullying the audience. I think it's <laughs> yes. a really good idea. And, and then the other practical one is that thing of making a video is a really simple, practical thing to say. A film your best five minutes and yes. send it out there. That's yes. really practical advice, you know. Yes. Um, so I've got two more questions yeah. for you in terms yes. of those kind of things. I was really interested to hear you talk about preparation and saying you prepare and get yourself into a place for the gig and then yeah. you travel to the gig. Could you yeah. tell us a bit more about that? Like what is prep, yeah. what is preparing like a gig for a gig? What is that like for you? So it's just, um, so just kind of like saying to myself, like I, I'm going here and I'm going to perform tonight. I'm going to do 10 minutes. I'm not sure what material I'm going to do yet. Cause I'm still thinking about it. I might have a few new jokes. I'll work those. I'll do like old material and work those in because people, I think there's a lot of pressure on people to, continuously produce material and it's yeah. that's not the case you can't because a lot of the stuff that our material is um, is tried and tested obviously and you have and you every time you do it you add something different to it or you change it you improve it anyway you you're improving it so you can't just keep every open mic night you're writing like five new minutes that's crazy yeah do you know what i mean you just can't do that so um i guess like just thinking about what it is that I want to say and what, you know, and just realize saying to myself, you know, you're going to perform tonight. Some people might not like it. Some people will yeah. So just preparing, you know, the audience could be like this, the audience could be like that. And also when I get to a gig, I look at the audience, I try to study them. Like, are they young? Are they old? What kind of, you know, because some of the, sometimes you have to change your jokes. Like if you're making references and to things that the audience might be too young to understand, and stuff like talking about Malala, I do a joke about Malala. And sometimes I don't do I take it out because they might not know who she is. So yeah. do you know what I mean? And, and then Absolutely. the punchline's not going to work. So all this kind of stuff, analyzing your settings and surroundings. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's such what, good. It's such simple advice, but it's such good advice is that, you know, yeah play the room that's in front of you it's no yes. good it's no good being set in your mind i'm going to do this i'm going to do this then you turn up and it, you, it's a different room you've got to play yes. that room haven't you yes <laughs> that's exactly. great really good advice and then and then yeah my final uh inquiry for you because i haven't really got an answer for this for myself either i was trying to Ooh. think about it the other day in terms of like what is and it's always a quite a uh, broad question but you're when you talk about writing you know yes. what is your process for writing do you do you carry a notebook around with you? Do you stick notes in your phone? Do you sit down at your computer and think I'm going to do two hours of writing now? What, how does no. it work? So, so for me, I've always, um, this is ridiculous, but I text myself. So if I come <laughs> up with a joke, so something might happen, I'll text it to myself. I know I'm such a, cause then I have it saved on the iCloud. I can't be doing all this notes business. So yeah, so I just, and I do have a book. So if I'm at a gig, and I, and I think of something, I'll write it down, but I can't carry the book with me all the time. And I just, I write based, for me, my writing's based on like things that I see, things that happen to me, things that I feel, my experiences. That's what I do. Sometimes my mom says like crazy stuff, you know, like the, <laughs> I remember we were young and the neighbor said to her, um, the neighbor said to her, your kids are a pain in the neck. 
And I got home from school. My mom's like, Fertiha, go and take her some paracetamol. She has pain in the neck. And I'm like, mom, it's us. We are the pain in the neck. Do you know what I mean? Like, so this is what I mean. Like, you can turn your experiences like that into jokes. And, yeah, and we've yeah. all got, I mean, I know, like, obviously we're from different cultural backgrounds and stuff. But I'm sure you've got an aunt Everyone's or an uncle same. or some nutter. In it, some nut are in your family that does exactly that kind of madness. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? And that's what makes it funny because you can relate, you know, because you you've probably, like I said, you've got some mad one like that in your family too. So, um, yeah. so that's what I do my writing. I don't ever sit down and put much pressure on. I never say to myself, "Fed, hey, you have to write a joke, or I have to do this, I have to do that." No. Sometimes yeah. a joke comes to mind and I have to work on it, but I don't ever like say, "Right, Friday we're going to write from one to two or whatever." I don't. Because I don't want to put pressure on myself. I want it to come natural. And, yeah. you know, that's why I don't think I could ever do Edinburgh. Because I'd have a whole year to write and I probably would write nothing. <laughs> like... I, uh, well, I th- I'm going to say you should absolutely do Edinburgh. And you'd, you'd have a brilliant time. Um, but uh, that's, a different, that's for a different time. <laughs> I, I, when this interview finishes, basically, I'm going to convince you to do Edinburgh. Because <laughs> I, I want to see that show. <laughs> That's great. I, I mean, I think, I think, I mean, I think that's that's advice that I, I I just so agree with is don't put pressure on yourself. It's such it's such sage advice, mate. And um, yeah. I think I think I think you know if we're going down your list, that thing of like don't concede to the audience, bully them, mm. and, and and like go at yeah. them. Don't concede an inch is mm. so good. Um, mentally prepare for that gig. Talk yourself into it. It's such good advice. Yes. Um, and yeah, don't put pressure on yourself to write. Just just let it see where it takes you. And it's can great. I add one more thing as well? Yes. yes so yes. like, just remember that that sta- another piece of advice would be like that stage time is your time. So it's up to you what you want to talk about. And if you ever do a joke that you think, uh oh, if your gut is telling you that joke is like either I don't know, like on the you know right on the knuckles and that then don't do it sound it out with somebody and and you know because yeah that's what i would say sound it because sometimes i go to open mics and these people make some people make jokes i'm like what the hell you're gonna get beaten up after the show (laughs) so yeah just listen you know go with your gut and use your time that's your time talk about what you want to talk about it's your comedy it's you there's no there is it's you and there is no one like you. So just make it you. And that's what I would say. Talk about what you want. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant advice. And not um, everybody's going to like you. That's another thing. Sorry. And don't, but don't let that stop you. That doesn't, cause this is an art and art is subjective. So don't, but don't let that stop you just cause um, you know, 10 people don't, these 10 people might not like you. These 10 people might love you. So it's subjective and no one can tell you that you're rubbish or whatever. Like, so you do it, just do it, and you know, yeah. Absolutely love that, Fata. Thank you so much, um, Fata Al Gori. Everyone who will be doing an Edinburgh show next year, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>